In this video, we are going to be taking derivatives of inverse trig functions and also doing integrals of inverse trig functions. All right, so let's jump right in. Say you have this function, seven arc sine 10 x squared plus 15 x minus nine. Now this is seven arc sine. That's just like saying that the sine of, you know, the angle equal, well, it would be seven, equals 10x squared plus 15x minus nine. It's also like saying um, seven sine inverse of the angle equals 10x squared plus 15x minus nine. Okay, now these derivatives have certain formulas that they will, um, adhere to. So sine looks like this. du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. Okay, so you have to be able to identify what your u is. a is just a constant. u is a function. Well, here we have our function. So, and this is du. So let's go ahead and write that down. u equals our function, which is 10x squared plus 15x minus nine. Our um, du is just the derivative of that. And then a is usually right underneath here. So if you don't see anything under there, then a equals one. And one squared, whoops, Let's do it like this. A squared would just be one squared, which is still just one. Okay, so you wanna get your function here back into this derivative form, okay? And so what that's gonna look like is the derivative of u on top. So derivative of u on top is 20x plus 15. And then we have the square root of a squared. So a comes first, so it's one, minus 10x squared plus 15x minus nine squared. And we can't forget our multiplier here of seven. Now, you could go ahead and um, square this out, which, is messy, but you can do it. But um, your teacher, if if they're nice, they won't make you do it. There you go. So that would be your answer for this one, which I probably should have put, I definitely, not probably, I definitely should have put when I started doing my derivative that that was f prime of x. Okay, let's keep moving here. Set of is the exact opposite of this over here. So this, remember, was sine du, whoops, over the square root of a squared minus u squared. That's what we got this. Well, cosine is just the opposite of that. It's just a negative. All right, so now let's do, find the derivative of the function h of t equals five sine arc cosine of t. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this one, and I think the first way is, the way I'm about to show you is pretty cool. But, yeah, let's just do it that way. Okay, so I, if I have this right here, right, this is like saying the cosine of the angle equals t. Well, what if we remember our trig, right? Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So watch this. If we draw a right triangle, we love right triangles, right? I never thought I would draw a triangle so much until I went back to school for math and science. Like it's always drawn a triangle and you would think my triangle would look better hold on since i'm always drawing these triangles 
Okay. So here's our right triangle. And here is our theta. Well, the cosine of this is t over 1. Now, because of that, we know that this is going to be 1 squared, right, minus t squared. And we know that because of Pythagoras, who said that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, with c being our hypotenuse. So if we have our hypotenuse is 1, and we have one of the sides, we get c squared. But if we want just c, we take the square root, and that's what we get over here. Now, check this out. This here says the sine of this angle. This is just like having 5 sine of x. This is like the angle of something within an angle, right? Which is pretty cool. Um, so if we do the sine, sine is opposite, right? Yeah, over hypotenuse. Okay, so our opposite opposite our angle is this guy. So we have, um, whoops, I don't know why I put h. 1 squared minus t squared over the hypotenuse, which is just 1, times a 5, which is just 5, 1 squared minus t squared. I think I should have showed you this way a second. But anyways, whatever. We'll just keep going because this way is really cool. So then what we'll say is we will then take the derivative of this. So then we'll say h prime of t equals 5 just a multiplier. Treat this as power rule. 1 half, 1 squared minus t squared um, minus 1 half times negative 2t because you have to chain rule the inside. We end up, these 2's will cancel. We end up with 5. That's a negative 5. And then we have this in the bottom, 1 minus t squared. And this would be your derivative. But check it out. You don't have to do it that way. This is the derivation of how to do it this way. And I think this way is just really fun because it shows you where everything comes from. Um, but if you, ooh, I forgot the t. You see, don't forget this guy. Just because you, you cancel the 2. Don't forget the t. Okay. So, um, the other way to do this is if we have, I'll rewrite the problem down here. Well, let me get it in a better color. We'll do it. H of t equals 5 sine arc cosine of t. Okay, so what we'll do is remember, this is just like saying the cosine of theta equals t. Um, so there is a formula for cosine, and it is the exact... Um, so we're going to have a negative du over the square root of a squared minus u squared. So what does that look like? We have... And then we have sine. Now this is going to be a chain rule derivative, right? Because if I had 5 sine of 5x, when I took the derivative of that, I would have to take the derivative of this, and then I would have to chain rule the derivative of the angle. So if I have, do h of t, 5, well the um, derivative of sine is cosine. And then here we have the cosine of, you know, if we just follow this right here, it's going to be u equals t, du equals 1, right? Because the derivative of t is just 1. And then we're going to go a squared. That's still 1. But u squared would be t squared. So we're going to have negative du, which is 1. And then square root of a squared minus u squared, which is t squared, and then you put these together. But in order to put these together, you need to know what the cosine is of this angle. So now we have 5 cosine of this angle, right, negative 1 over 1 minus t squared. Well, if we look at our triangle, which we drew up here, cosine is adjacent 
over hypotenuse. So that is just t over 1. So our cosine of theta equals t over 1. So for this right here, we are going to put in 5 times t. Don't forget to sub him in. 1 minus t squared. And then we just put this all together. And this is going to be negative 5t over 1 minus t squared. So practice both ways. You see we got the same answer both ways. Um, I personally, I think I like the derivation part better because I just do. I think it's more fun. Um, but if you do it both ways on a test, if you get a different answer with one, then you know that you made a hiccup somewhere and you can go back and check yourself. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, and then let's look at, find the derivative of the function y equals arc tan of 3x squared divided by 2. Okay, make this a little bigger. All right, so arc tan also has a formula, and the formula looks like, oh, I lied, no square root. It's going to be du over a squared plus u squared, so no square root, and then 1 over a. Okay, so we let me show you how it's derived first, like how they came up with this. Okay, so remember, this is like saying the tangent of y equals 3x squared divided by 2. Okay, well remember, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's draw a triangle. Alright, so we have opposite is going to be 3x squared. Um, adjacent is going to be 2. And since we have two sides of our triangle, we know that our hypotenuse is the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3x squared squared, which is going to be 9x to the fourth. Okay, so now let's say I'm taking the derivative of both sides of this. So it'll be y prime equals the arc tan. Well, we're going to have to use our... So let's make this 1 squared plus u squared. Okay, so this is going to be, whoops, du, well, the, this is u, u equals 3x squared over 2. So the du of that is going to be 3x, because that's 6x divided by 2. And so what we'll do is we'll say 3x divided by 1 plus because this will take care of this 1 over a. Maybe. Let's see. Okay, 1 plus u squared. So this is, I should say squared. 3x squared divided by 2 squared. Well, if I square that, this is going to be a 4. So let me go ahead and rewrite that. So the top squared is 9x to the 4th divided by 4. So I'm going to go 4 times 4. Oh. Oops. Four over four. So that's going to get rid of that, but it's also going to multiply here. So we're going to have 12x over four plus 9x to the fourth is y prime. So that's one way that you could do it. But setting up your triangle um, is really helpful, especially for how we looked at. Um, the last one, how you know, finding like right now, if I wanted to know the sine of this angle, I would know it's this over this, and then I would take the derivative of that, and that would give me my answer. But we just wanted to know the tangent, so this is what our answer would be for this one. And another um, thing to do is to make sure that you are taking the integrals of your derivative and vice versa when you're practicing. So, what you would do is, and I'm going to do integrals later on in this video, but 
this right here. So you would take the derivative of this, and you'll see, we'll go over how to do that um, in the end and how to recognize that this is an arc tangent and make sure that you get this back. And then when you're taking the integrals and you get this answer, you get your function back, making sure that you can go back and get the derivative because that'll really help you. Um, I know when I was taking my last test, I caught myself on some mistakes because when I was taking the derivative, my derivative didn't match my original function. And I was like, oh no. And that let me know that I had messed up somewhere and save the day. Okay, so let's do another one. All right, so we're gonna find the derivative of the function y equals e to the arc tan of x. Okay, so how do we get this arc tan? Because this is what we want to deal with. So in order to get him down, we need to take the ln of both sides. So we're going to do the ln of y times the ln of e to the arc tan of x. Now, property of logarithms, it says that I can now bring this guy down to the front, which is what you would do for a base other than e. However, which I'll just show that way. So now you have the ln of y equals arc tan of x ln of e. Well, the ln of e, he's just one. Just one. So he just kind of goes away. Now, when we start taking our derivatives now, because this was just rewriting it so that way we could, you know, deal with it in a way that was manageable. The ln of y is just the function y on the bottom times the derivative of that function, or not times, excuse me, then you have the derivative of that function on top. But don't forget, you have to chain rule this angle. So then you have y prime equals, remember our uh, thing for arc tan of x, well, we're going to go like this. We're going to say du over 1 squared plus u squared is our tan x formula. So u equals x and du is going to be 1. So we're going to have 1 over 1 squared plus x squared. Okay, well what we're solving for here is the derivative. We're taking the derivative, which means that we need to take this guy and times him over here. So then we have y prime equals 1 over 1 plus x squared times y. Well, what is y? Well, y is this guy. So, go like that. So, we're going to have y prime equals e to the arc tan x over 1 plus x squared. Now, this is interesting, right? Because we know that when we take the derivative of this, it would be e to the u du times the ln of e, which ln of e goes away. Well, e to the u is just this. We get, when we're taking the derivative of e to the u, we just get e to the u du. Well, we know now that the derivative of u was this right here, which we have in place. So we could really write this as e arc tan of x times du, which was 1 over 1 plus x squared times, and we have that invisible ln of e, but he's just 1. So if you see, this does still follow our um, differentiation for our base e. It's just now with inverse trig functions. All right? All right, so this is our answer. Okay, so now we're going to start taking some integrals. So let's look at what an integral of an inverse trig function would look like. I don't know why that got so sloppy. Okay. So the very first thing you're going to do with these is you're not going to, for one, know in real life, right, that this is an inverse trig function. The very first thing we would probably think 
is that this is a power rule. So we'll set it up that way. Okay, so we have, if this was a power rule, and now we know that this is not a logarithm because there is a power in the bottom. So we're gonna assume this is a power rule and we'll set u equal to sine of three x. Well, the du of that is going to be sine, oh, lies, sorry. It's gonna be cosine of three x times three dx. Well, let's go ahead and first rewrite this so we can better see that this is power rule. And we're gonna do that by saying sine to the negative fifth three x. Okay, so all we need to create our perfect du is this three, which is fine because we can multiply by a constant as long as we divide by the, the other part, making it one. And then we're just gonna be integrating the power. That's how these work. So, and if you want to brush up on those, I did another video on um, just good old integrals before we get into inverse trig functions. So we actually did this and it's good that we didn't just assume that it was needed to fall into some category because it doesn't, it was just a power rule integral. So now we have that our integral equals one third sine, add one to the power, divide by the new power, Okay, and then that is gonna equal, oh, plus C, and then that's gonna equal and that is your integral. Okay, so now let's look at this integral. So we have four dx over 9 minus 25 x squared. Okay, now if you remember, we had that our arc sine of x formula, or we'll call it arc sine of u formula, um, for the derivative was going to be 1 over, or excuse me, not 1, du over a squared minus u squared square rooted. So this, you know, doesn't necessarily, it, it kind of looks like it, right? If we can identify that u is going to be 5x, because it would be, if we look at this as a squared minus u squared, we see that what would give us 25x squared? Well, 5x would, right? So u squared is this 5x squared, which is 25x. 25x squared, my handwriting, 25x squared, and our a is going to be 3, right, because a squared would be 9. So, if we were to go just right in, we see that this is going to be, well, we need our du, so our du of 5x is just 5 which is fine because we can just bring this four out and then multiply by five, divide by five, dx, don't forget that. And then we have nine minus 25 x squared. And so once we have created the perfect, um, once we've got it back into this form, that's what you wanna do. The very first step is to get it into a form that we recognize, a form that looks like the formulas for the arc sine, for the arc cosine, for the arc tangent, um, and you know, for the arc secant and things of that nature, which I'm not going to do arc secant in this video. We're gonna work with arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent because you can really derive all the other ones from those. Okay, so now that we have it in this form that we recognize, we're ready to get it back into this, right? So now we can say, well, we have our four fifths right here, arc sine of u. So what was our u? Our u was five x and our a was three. And don't forget the plus C. All right, let's do another. 
Okay, so say we have the integral of 5e3 to the x, 4 plus 3e to the 3x. So we're not going to assume that this is a um, inverse trig function, so or derivative, because you would be trying to get the function back. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we would set u equal to the bottom. If we had just one e to a power, we would set the u to the power, but we have multiple, so we're going to set the bottom to the power and just see what happens. The derivative of this is e to the u times the derivative of u times ln of e, which we know is just 1, dx. Well, we sort of kind of already have that, right? Because this would be 9e to the 3x dx. Well, we have a 5. So it turns out this is not an inverse trig function. What happens when we have a, oops, a u du? That's a logarithm. Bring that out, and then we're going to multiply by 9. And we're going to get 5 ninths times 9e nine to the 3x, 4 plus 3e to the 3x, and I totally wrote this backwards. This is du over u. Remember, du over u equals the absolute value of ln of u plus c. So that's all we're going to write. We're going to write 5 ninths. Ln absolute value of 4 plus 3e to the 3x plus c. And that is your answer for that one. So never assume, because like initially I looked at this and I was like, oh, well, this must be an arctan. Because that could be an a squared, right? But then if I was trying to do a u squared, I mean, you could do like the square. It wouldn't be a perfect square of e to the 3x squared, right? Or, yeah, it just, it'd be weird. But either way, don't assume um, anything. Work it out and see what happens. Because your teachers are probably going to throw you some things in there like this to make sure you're not just uh, like trying to absorb everything and then regurgitate it out. They want you to keep in your brain everything that you've learned previously and be able to apply it to different situations when you aren't expecting it. All right, so what if you have the integral... 5 dx x squared minus 8x plus 25. Okay, well, first thing we'll do is we'll set the bottom equal to u. x squared minus 8x plus 25. Well, what about our du? That's going to be 2x minus 8. Well, we have a problem. We can multiply by a constant. We cannot cannot add in an x. We can't add in variables. So this is not a logarithm. It's not, you know, du, u. It's not u, du. It's none of that stuff. When it's not, you know that this is an inverse trig function. You know. Okay. Now, this doesn't look like any of the inverse trig functions that we've done. So what we have to do is we have to get it back in the form. And we do that by creating, because remember we have these. These are our formulas. We have um, 1 over, I keep writing 1, du over 1 squared minus u squared. I think it should be a squared. And this is our arc sine of u. Yes, it should be a squared. This is our arc sine of u, right? And then we also had du 
1 squared, right, plus u squared. And this was arc tan of u. And then if we have negative du over a squared minus u squared, this is arc cosine of u. This doesn't look like any of those. So what we have to do is we have to create, you know, an a squared, a perfect square, you know, whether it's going to be a minus or a plus. So let's see what happens. So much of math I've found is just like proceeding forward wisely and finding out what happens. So I'm going to create a perfect square. Since I need squares, I'm just going to create one. All right, so I have 5 dx. Now, in order to create a perfect square, x squared minus 8x plus 25, I know that I need what? Half of this squared, which is going to be minus 4 squared. Oops, lies. Is that? Nope, it's right. Plus 4 squared. All right. Because I had a minus right here, that comes out. And I get x minus the thing that I was putting in, which we really could underline this part. I'll show you why in just a second. Because then you're going to have this 25 minus 4 squared, which is 25 minus 16, which is 9. So this is plus 9. Alright, now we know when we're completing a if you have x minus 4, like, let's just check. All right, so you have x squared, outer and inner, so that's negative 8x, plus 16. Which, and then you have plus 9, and so that's going to give you back x squared minus 8x plus 25, which is what we had to begin with right? So you always check yourself if you're not comfortable because I know it's, at least for me, it's been a while since I have done completing the square. And so if it has been for you too, um, don't let that discourage you, just practice. And if you see here, this is always plus, right? So even though I'm going to put in this minus sign right here into my x minus 4, I know that I'm using the I'm using a positive one and I'm keeping this negative right here to create this 9. And so then what I'm going to have is 5dx over which we could even go 9 just to keep it in form plus x minus 4 squared. And then this looks a lot more like what we've had before. So now we'll have u is x minus 4, so du is going to be 1, which is fine because we this guy is just a constant. We can pull him out. And then we have that a is going, because this is a squared, so a will be 3. And then what you're going to do is we notice then that we have the form du, which this is what this will look like. dx over 9 plus x minus 4 squared. And so we end up with du over a squared plus u squared. And that looks a lot like an arc tangent. Now, when you are, we want to get this back into, now that we have it in a form that we recognize, we want to get it in this form, 1 over a arc tan of u over a plus c. Okay, so we can't forget this 1 over a. So we've established that a is 3, and so we're going to have this 5 as a multiplier. So it's going to be 5 times 1 over a, which is just 1 over 3, arc tan of u, which we said was x minus 4 over a plus c. And like I said, this is the form you want to get. The arc tan is the only one that has 
this one over a um, out in the front. And if you're really interested in um, figuring out how that is and why that is, there's um, a really good professor that has a thing on this and her name is Tracy Franchillo. And she, um, I know it's, I think it's under like math, 263 5.8 I think I think it's 5.8 it's either 5.7 or 5 it's 5.8 it's definitely 5.8 um so if you do want to check her out she has videos on how these um derivations or these formulas that we're using um they came to be and you'll find out that it just came to be that way because U over A was the most simplest, prettiest um, thing on the triangle to use with this, and we end up with a one over A. So if you're interested in looking more into that, you can look up her channel on YouTube and look specifically for Math 263 5.8. Okay, so now what if you have the integral 5e to the 3x over 4 plus 3e to the 6x dx. Okay, so we had one like this a few problems ago, but we had on the bottom, we had 4 plus 3e to the 3x. So if you notice, the only thing different here is that power that our e is being raised to. Okay, so the very first thing we'll do is we won't assume and we will set u equal to the bottom because that's how we would normally proceed. And we go, we can do our du, and we have, we know that 3e to the u, you copy it, times the derivative of the power, like that, plus the ln of e, so we end up with 18e to the 6x. So, we don't have that. We have a 5e to the 3x, so this is not a logarithm. Um, and so what we need to do then is once we have figured that out, we know it's not a power rule because this is not wrapped up to a power. Um, we know that this is an inverse trig function. So that means we need to put it back in a form of one of our forms that we know for formulas that looks like something we can work with. So we have this plus here, and that tells me that we're probably dealing with an arc tangent, right? Because arc sine and arc cosine, they are both under the square root and they're both minus. And so it's not those, it has to be arc tan. So if I look here, I see that this is a squared plus u squared. And knowing that, I know that this right here, this u has to be th square root of three e to the 3x. And I know that because if I did square root of 3, if you ever just don't know, that's okay. You know, life gets really interesting when we actually don't know. We don't have to know everything. And so we go square root of 3 times e to the 3x. Well, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. And then e to the 3x times e to the 3x is going, we just add the powers right? When you're multiplying exponents, you just add them. So we know that, that is our u. Well, our du is going to be, square root of 3 is just a um, constant coefficient, right? So we have, let me erase that so we have some space. We have e to the u du dx. So that means that this is going to be 3 square root of 3e e to the 3x. So we need to multiply. We need to get rid of this guy, move him out here, and then we need to multiply by 3 square root of 3 over 3 square root of 3. All right, so let's see what this looks like. We have our 5 on the outside, 3 square root of 3 right here, right here, e to the 3x dx. Now we have our perfect du, 4 plus, which we could even say, um, 
Well, we can say 4 plus 3e to 3x squared, right? So we can see it better. Um, and then what we'll do is we will go ahead and remember our form that we want to get it into, which is supposed to be du, which we have, over the 1 plus u squared or a squared, whatever. So we'll just leave it as a squared. A is just a constant. I like saying c squared. I don't know why the book doesn't say that, but that makes more sense to me. But I'm sure that c probably means something else. Like the speed of light is probably why we don't use it. Okay, off on a tangent, back on track. Okay, so we have du, a squared plus u squared. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this down. We have five, three, square root of three. Remember that the form that we're trying to get our tangent back into is one over a arc tan of a oh, ugh, of u over a plus c. So we have five over three root three. And then remember a we said was, no we didn't say, a was two because two squared would be four. So we have one over four and then we have arc tan of u, which was square root of 3, e to the 3x over, well, this is supposed to be a 2, over 2. So then we are going to end up having 5 over 6 root 3, arc tan of square root of 3, e to the 3x over 2, plus c. I should have a plus c right there. But the simplified version would be right there. And say you got this and you're you're like, man, that's there's a lot going on. Um you know, let me let me check myself. So you say, okay, well I'm gonna take the derivative of this and see if I do indeed get this guy back. Because that's what you would want. So if you were to take the derivative of this, we would say this would be a constant, right? And then we know arc tan needs to be in our the, the thing that we're creating. Remember, because we create the perfect derivative so we can get it into this form. So du over, say, 1 plus u squared. Okay, so this is the form that you want to get it back into. So let's just see. This is what you do for this. Set I'm telling you, do it this way because it's just so much easier. Set this whole thing right here equal to u. I know, I know, I know that this is technically a, but set this whole thing equal to u. So then you're going to take, let's do that. We're going to say u equals square root of 3 e to the 3x over 2. Well, what is the du of that? Well, square root of 3 over 2, that's just, you know, multiplier. e to the 3x is e to the u derivative of u, which is 3. And you end up with 3 square root of 3 over 2 e to the 3x dx. Hold on, we're not dx. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take, we can just, I guess I could have left that. Okay, so this is our multiplier, and that doesn't change. And then, so we'll do y prime equals, we bring that down, and then we'll have du, so we created our du, I'm gonna put him right there. And so this is gonna be three square root of three over two e to the three x. Okay, and then we're gonna have one, and I know this is weird because we have been doing it as when you're taking the integral set it up in this form to get a squared plus u squared. But when you're taking the derivative of the integrated form, do one plus u squared and set this whole function equal to u. And you'll see why in just a second. Okay, so one plus, and then the u is gonna be whoop, square root of three, e to the three x over two squared. All right, 
So when we simplify that, we have still our constant coefficient. And then we're going to have this squared is going to be, the square root of 3 squared is 3. e to the 3x squared is e to the 6x divided by 4. And then so we're going to have 3 square root of 3 e to the 3x divided by 2. And then we have 1 plus 3e to the 6x divided by 4. Well, I want to get rid of this 4, so I'm going to multiply whatever this is down here, whatever fraction you end up with, you're going to multiply the whole thing by it. And if you look up here at our integrated or at our derivative, we see we're going in the right direction because this becomes a 4, and that's going to happen. Do you see why we use the 1? Because when we do it this way, it's just so much easier, and it's just going to fall into place. So we're going to have 5 over 6 root 3. And then 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So we have 6 whoop, root 3 e to the 3x. And then we have 1 plus oh, lies, 4 plus 3e to the 6x. That 4 cancels that 4. Okay? And then we look here. We see this and this cancel. And we end up with 5 e to the 3x over 4 plus 3e to the 6x, which is exactly what we started with up here. Exactly. And so these, it's really, I wanted to show with this one um, that it's really helpful to take the derivative after you've taken the integral, make sure you get it back. For one, that's going to make sure that you're getting the right answer. Um, and then it also helps you to see where everything's going and where everything went and how to get it back. So just to summarize, to help us remember, I say this as much for me as I do for you. The one over a happens when we are doing the integral. So when you are putting it back together, think you're going to be putting this one over a in. So you're putting an arc tan back together, you have to put the one over a. When you are doing, when you're taking the derivative of an arc tan, there is no 1 over a. So derivative, we're pulling apart. For the integrand, we are adding it together. We're putting it together, so we're going to put, we're going to add in that 1 over a. Hopefully that helps. Alright, so let's say we have the integral 7x over 9 minus 4x squared dx. So, again, we would check first to see if 9 minus 4x squared would be something that we would work with, and then this would be a power rule, which would give us negative 8x dx as our um, derivative, which actually we can make that happen here. So, what we will do then is rewrite this as 7x to the 9 minus 4x squared, negative 1 half. Then we have the 7 out here. Then we need to multiply by negative 8. Let me do that in a different color. And then you're just integrating the power. Oh, don't forget dx. All right, so then we're going to have negative 7 eighths. And then we are just integrating the power. So we're not going to be bringing the power down and all of that business. We're just going to say add 1 to the power, which is going to make this to the positive 1 half. And then we divide by that new power, which is going to get oh, plus C, which is going to give us negative 7 eighths. Remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. which gives us negative 14 over 8, 9 minus, oh, goodness, plus C, which then gives us negative 7 over 2, over 4, 9 minus 4x squared, 
fussy. Now at first glance, let's see, once you start doing these, you'll say, well, this looks like it's gonna be a arc sign. But we always have to check because you could end up just having a regular old power rule integration. All right, and so say now we wanted to take the derivative of this and make sure that it was correct. We would just have this, say y prime, will be negative seven fourths times power rule. We'll bring this down one half nine minus four x squared derivative oh, negative one half derivative of the inside is negative eight x and then we will simplify so we'll have negative seven over eight and then we have a negative eight over here so that's going to cancel this this and that negative and then we have nine minus four x squared in the denominator equal hold on shouldn't have started canceling stuff so early let's put nine minus four x squared in the denominator which gives us seven over nine minus four x squared oop forgot my x there we go and you see that you get back your derivative and it's also a good reminder that when you're doing this you're just rewriting it you're not taking the derivative of this you're not bringing that power down that's what you do when you're taking the derivative not when you're putting it back together when you're putting it back together you're going to be adding to this adding one and then dividing by that new power as well and this one here looks a lot like the one we just did. It is 7x dx over square root of 9 minus 4x to the 4th. Okay, so we'll set u equal to 9 minus 4x to the 4th. du is going to be minus 16x cubed. Well, I don't have this part, and I cannot multiply by anything other than a constant. So... I know that I know that this is an inverse trig function. And I know that I'm going to be looking for arc sine because I have that a squared minus u squared format, which means that u is going to be 2x squared. The derivative of u is going to be 4x, which isn't a problem because that's just a constant. I would just move him out and then multiply by 4 over 4, and I can totally get my 4x dx in there, which then puts me in the form of du a squared minus u squared. And then I know that I can integrate this as arc sine of u over a plus c. So we then will have 7 fourths, oops, I guess, well, let's just write it. 4x dx over 9 minus 4x to the 4th. Okay, and so then we're going to integrate. We'll have 7 fourths arc sine of u, which we said was 2x squared over a, which is 3, plus c. And then, to check ourselves, let's take the derivative now of this function. So we have 7 fourths. Now remember, we want to get it, our derivative into that function, which is what we just did, right? We got our derivative into the function, so we realized what our formula for the actual function should look like. So now let's put it back. 7 fourths du, so remember we're going to make this whole thing u is going to be 2x squared over 3 du is going to be 4x divided by 3. So we have 4x divided by 3 in the top, and then we have a squared. Well, let's just do 1 minus u squared. Remember, because we do when we're getting it back into the derivative, we want that 1. So we have 1 minus this u squared. So u squared is going to be 
let's see, if we square this, it's going to be 4x to the 4th over 9. And I really should rewrite that because that 9 is under the square root 2. So when we multiply to clear this, we're really multiplying by square root of 9 over square root of 9, which we know is 3. So that's going to cancel that. We're going to have 4x over, and then square root of 9, we won't write square root right here because it is under the square root, minus 4x to the 4th over 7 over 4. Well, that 4 is going to cancel, and that's going to leave us with 7x over 9 minus 4x to the 4th. And then when we check our integral, the derivative that we were given to integrate is indeed this. So we did well. All right, so now what if we had the integral of 2x plus 5 dx over x squared plus 16. Okay, so the very first thing I would do is set u equal to what's in the bottom. So I'm going to put this up here. Set u equal to x squared plus 16, which would mean du would be 2x. So we see here that well, it would be 2x dx. We see that we have the 2x and we have the dx, but we have extra stuff. So when, when you find yourself in this situation, remember a property of fractions is that we can rewrite this as 2x over x squared plus 16 plus, so it'll be this sign right here, plus 5 over x squared plus 16. <clears throat> and both of these will have their own dx. And then what we'll do is we'll integrate just like that in that form. So we see if we had this one, we would end up with already having the perfect du. So this would be du over u, which we know is the ln of u plus c. So we can integrate that part, and that's going to be the ln of what our u was, and then plus c. But we're not done yet, so we won't add our constant, because now we need to integrate this guy right here. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll set u equal to x squared plus 16, and then we see that our du is 2x. Well, we have a 5, which we could move out, but we don't have an x. So when you see that we cannot do that, we need to look at it as a trig function. This is inverse trig. So, which inverse trig is it? Well, we have a plus, so we know that we are working with some type of arc tangent, right? And we know this is, so let's go ahead, if we were to put our arc tan into a form that we're familiar with, that would be du over 1 plus, excuse me, when we're doing the integral, it's a squared plus u squared. And then this is the form we want to get it in. So eventually we can write the completed integral as 1 over a arc tan of u over a. So remember when we're integrating, we add the 1 over a. So let's determine who is what. Okay, so we're going to add or we're going to make u equal to x because u squared this would be u squared, is x squared. And then a is going to be 16, or excuse me, a squared is 16, so a is going to be 4. 
Well, our du equals 1 dx. So what we need to do here is we will have plus the integral of dx. We move the 5 outside. And then we have a squared plus u squared. And then that's exactly what we need. But we can't forget that we have to do 1 over a. So 1 over a, and a is 4. So then we need to go ahead and we can finish this out now. Copy this. And then we'll have plus 5 over 4. Whoop. Arc tan of u which was x over a, which was four, plus c. And this is our integral. And now we want to take the derivative of this integral, or this integrated function, and see if we get this back, just to make sure that we got it right. So if we go right here, we know to do, to integrate this, we'll say y prime, well ln is just the function on the bottom, times the derivative, of the function on top, and then we have plus 5 over 4 is a constant, and then arc tan, we want to put it back into this form, which is going to be du 1 plus u squared. That's the form that we want it in, and we don't do 1 over a because that's already accounted for in the constant. So, now remember when we do these, we set u equal to this whole bit here. So we're going to have the whole function or the whole angle is equal to u, right? So u squared is going to be x squared over 16. And then du is equal to 1 over 4. So we need to get it in the form of du Oh, I already have that right here. du 1 plus u squared. Okay, so let's do that. We said our du was 1 fourth over 1 plus u squared, which we said was x squared over 16. Well, I need to multiply by the 16 over 16 to clear this. So I'm going to bring this guy down. And this is going to be 16 over 4 is going to be 4. And then you have 16 plus x squared. Well, these 4s cancel. And then that leaves us with 5 over 16 plus x squared. And you have 2x over x squared plus 16. We already have a common denominator, so we're good to go there. We can just put everybody together over 1. We have 2x plus 5 over x squared plus 16 is our derivative, and that's exactly what we started with to integrate. So there we go. We did it. We checked ourselves, and we made sure that we had everybody in there that we needed. All right, now what if we had the integral of 2x plus 3 dx x squared minus 8x plus 25. Well, we're going to start the same way. We're going to go set our u equal to the bottom. Because this looks like it could be a logarithm, right? Maybe. du equals 2x minus 8. So, not, we have the 2x, oh, dx. But we have a 3, and we need a minus 8. So, we're going to do like we did on the previous problem, but sort of like an extra step. I'm going to make this a 3 by saying 11 minus 8, right? Because if I'm trying to get to 3, if I take 11 minus 8, that'll give me 3. And so then I'll have a 2x minus 8 if I do like this. If I do 2x minus 8 dx plus 
11 because negative 8 plus 11 would still be 3. And then put them over the same denominator. Okay, so now for this very first one, we see that this is du over u, which we know now is the ln of the function And then we have right here, we're going to put u, same thing, equal to the x squared minus 8. But we see du would be 2x minus 8. So we see that that does not work for this. So this one is inverse trig function. We know it. So what we're going to do then is we need to set it up into a form that we will recognize. And it's not any type of form that we would recognize right now. So what we need to do is complete the square, make us a perfect square. So half of this, we're going to have plus 4 squared minus 4 squared. Okay, and so that's going to give us x minus 4 squared plus, well, you have 25 minus 16 is 9 because this part right here, x minus 4, is going to give us x squared minus 8x plus 16, right? And we had 25. So this, the difference between 16 and 25 is 9. That's another way you can check yourself in your math. All right, so now we have 11 over x minus 4, which we still need to integrate, squared plus 9. So then we can look at this as this being a squared and this as being u squared. So what do we need here? Well, I need to make some room. Okay, so we're going to have u equals x minus 4, du equals 1, a equals 3, and when we are integrating, remember we want to do the, this is an arctan, remember, because it's a plus, and our cosines and sines, they're square rooted in their subtraction. So that's not what we have going on. We have a inverse arctan, or we have an arctan, which is an inverse tangent. So what we're going to do then is we will say du over the a squared plus u squared 1 over a. So we're going to have to bring this guy out. Just go ahead and recopy him down. Have the 11 out here and then also the 1 over a which is going to be 1 over 3. And then we have du which we know is just 1 dx. So we have dx over x minus 4 squared plus 9, and now we can integrate that. So it's going to be 11 over 3 arctan of u over a. Bring this guy down. And there we go. And so then we can take the derivative of this and see if we get our answer back. So let's go y prime is going to be for a logarithm you just copy down the function and then derivative of the function on top and then for arctan we know that we're going to be putting it back in this form. So we're setting u equal to x minus 4 over 3. So du equals 1 over 3. So we have 1 over 3, 1 plus u squared, which is x minus 4 over 3 squared, which actually I'll write down. This is going to be x minus 4 
squared over 9. And so then we'll multiply by 9 to clear that fraction. We'll get y prime equals, bring this guy down, Nine divided by three is going to be three over nine plus x minus four squared. Cancel that. And then we end up with. Now, remember this was the same thing as this, but you could always recheck it. But remember, that's what we got up here when we completed the square. So this is the equivalent of this. So we're already over a common denominator. And we know that minus 8 plus 11 is 3. Plus 3. Sorry about that. All right, and then you see that we got our answer back. So remember, when you are taking the integral of an arc tangent, you're adding in that 1 over a, and you're doing it as a squared plus u squared. But when you're undoing the function and getting a derivative, you are not adding in the 1 over a, and you're just um, determining how you're going to set up your derivative based on 1 plus u squared, not a squared plus u squared. It just works so much better that way. Okay, so say you have this right here. Well, we need to get, well, let's check it first and see if this is going to be a power rule derivative. So we have u is 5 minus x squared plus 4x. So du is going to be minus 2x plus 4. So we don't have that, so we know that that is not a power rule derivative. So we know that we're working with an inverse trig function. Which one? Well, we know with this minus that it's going to be an arc sign. However, if you don't see that, that's okay. What we need to do is turn this into a perfect square. And we're going to do that. First, I'm going to rewrite it just like that. Then I'm going to factor out a minus. So minus, I'm going to get x squared minus 4x minus 5, and I'm going to leave us some room to work. Now we need to create a perfect square so we can get it into one of the forms that we have um, been working with. So we're going to do half of this, right? So it's going to be half of the 2 squared and then minus 2 squared to keep it the same. All right, so that is going to be... It's going to be x minus 2 squared. And so this right here is sort of taken care of. Well, now we need to do the negative 5 and negative 2. Well, if I take the negative 5 out, it's going to become a positive 5 because it's a negative times this negative. And I'm going to take this negative 2 squared out, and it's going to become a plus 4, which is a plus 9. Well, if I have a plus 9 right there, that's the same as writing this. 9 minus x minus 2 squared. Now that looks like something that we've worked with before, right? This looks like a sine, an arc sine function because of this. Oops. So now we have a squared minus u squared. And then we need to have du over the square root of a squared, which, yes, a squared minus u squared. Okay, so our u is x minus 2. Our du is going to be 1 dx. Our u squared is x minus 2 squared. And our a 
is 3. So we need to get it in this form. So du is 1, so we're going to pull off a 2 to the side, which is fine because it's just a constant. And then we have 9 minus x minus 2 squared. Great. So now what we need to do is we need to have it in this form, arc sine of u divided by a plus c. And then we also have this constant. So this is going to equal 2 times arc sine of u, which we said was x minus 2, divided by a plus c. And that is our integrated function. Now, if we're going to take the derivative of this, we'll say that we'll look at this right here is the entire thing is being u, and we want it to be du over square root of 1 squared minus u squared. So this is how we'll set it up. Um, u is going to be x minus 2 over 3, so du equals 1 over 3. Let's see here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll have 1 over 3, we'll say y prime. We have that 2 multiplier times, or excuse me, divided by 1 minus u squared. So u squared is going to be x minus 2 squared over 9. Well, you have to remember that this is all happening underneath the radical. Right, so now I have a 9, but this is really the square root of 9. So I'm going to multiply everybody by square root of 9. And this is also equal to 3. So that's going to cancel with that. We have 2 over square root of, now this 9 just goes straight in there, minus x minus 2 squared which we can go ahead and FOIL out. So we're going to have x minus 2, x minus 2. That's x squared minus minus, it's minus 4x plus 4. So let's do that. That's going to be 2 divided by, we do 9, minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. equals 2 and then distribute that minus. Now we have 9 minus 4 which we know is 5 minus x squared plus 4x and we do indeed get our answer back. Alright, keep practicing and just Know that you can do it if you keep practicing. You can absolutely do this. All right. Good luck.